So what brings you in today? Oh, lately I've been feeling quite dizzy a lot of the time and my nose is bleeding and often I have headaches as well. Oh, that doesn't sound very nice. No. Uh, those are actually all symptoms of hypertension. Mm -hmm. So let's start by taking your blood pressure. Okay. I'm going to at least to do that. And can you tell me about your salt intake? My salt intake? It's not a problem. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear it. Um, and how about your diet? What does that look like? My diet. Uh, here's a two extra large pizza. Oh, sugar. thank you. I eat pretty healthy. I try to eat healthy. Good. Do you happen to have any stress in your life? School's so stressful, I just can't handle it. So I'm pretty good at handling stress, I think. Okay. So your blood pressure was 160 over 95. Mm -hmm. And uh, just looking at your records, it seems that within the last two years, it has been consistently getting higher. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody ever talked to you about hypertension? Uh, not that I remember. No? Yeah. Okay, so well, let's talk about that and go over some things. The best way to explain hypertension is to compare normal physiology of the cardiovascular system to how hypertension affects it. Blood pressure is equivalent to cardiac output multiplied by peripheral resistance. When one or both factors increase, the blood pressure rises, which over an extended period of time leads to hypertension. Cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped by the heart per minute. Peripheral resistance is the amount of friction occurring as blood flows through the vessels, which is influenced by blood viscosity, the length of the blood vessels, the diameter, and the flexibility. When a person has additional weight, such as their client rows, blood vessel length is increased, which causes increase in blood pressure. When the heart pumps, it will force blood from the left ventricle into the aorta. From there, the pressurized blood is transported through the arteries and into the capillaries. This is how organs and tissues throughout your body receive oxygen and nutrients. Normally, the baroreceptors in the blood vessels are sending action potentials to the medulla oblongata in the brain to help regulate short-term blood pressure and maintain homeostasis by affecting heart rate and vascular smooth muscle. One possible cause of hypertension could be the buildup of plaque in the arterial walls, <clears throat> limiting the flexibility of the arterioles, increasing peripheral resistance. This plaque decreases the baroreceptor's ability to send action potentials to the brain and the blood pressure's normal homeostasis is disrupted. Let's talk about the sympathetic nervous system, or SNS. In normal pathophysiology, the SNS may be stimulated by a low blood pressure, decrease in extracellular fluid, or a decrease in extracellular sodium concentration. This increase in the SNS increases the release of renin, a synthesized enzyme released from the kidneys, and this is released in response to the increase in the SNS. The renin enters the bloodstream, where a plasma protein synthesized by the liver called angiotensinogen combines with the renin to make angiotensin 1. When angiotensin 1 is combined with ACE, an enzyme from the lungs, it creates angiotensin 2. The angiotensin 2 is then sent to the adrenal cortex, which secretes aldosterone, resulting in sodium and water retention leading to an increase in blood pressure. When there is stress, it causes the adrenal glands to release epinephrine or norepinephrine, which adds to the sympathetic nervous system response resulting in an increase in cardiac output and also an increase in peripheral resistance due to vasoconstriction. Normally, calcium assists the smooth muscle and cardiac muscle in the body to contract. When there is an excess amount of calcium entering the cytoplasm from the extracellular fluid, it increases heart contractility, which in turn increases cardiac output. The excess calcium in the intracellular fluid can cause issues such as prolonged smooth muscle constriction, causing thickening of the arterial vessel walls which leads to an irreversible rise in peripheral resistance. In summary, if peripheral resistance or cardiac output are increased together or individually over an extended period of time, hypertension may occur. Baroreceptors play a key role in homeostasis by sending action potentials to the brain. In terms of cell membrane, 
excess calcium increases cardiac output and peripheral resistance. The renin angiotensin system involves the use of proteins, which leads to water and sodium retention. Right, so do you feel like you understand what we've talked about today? Yeah, I think so. All right, so some, some interventions to take forward from today are trying to limit the amount of salt that we're in, consuming. Um, in terms of your diet, just limiting the amount of high fatty foods that we're eating and uh, making sure that we're following Canada's food guide. We want to consume um, multi as many fruits and vegetables as um, we can throughout our day. And in terms of our stress, we just want to try and limit the amount of stress where you're experiencing. Um, take breaks from you know your life sometimes. Just be able to rest. You know, take time for yourself. Okay, and that'll help reduce my blood pressure. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. And just remember that high blood pressure can, over an extended period of time, have more complications in the future. So you want to take care of yourself. Okay.